use of ran random variables. Uh, so here, we are dealing with expectation of bx, right? So first, we are dealing with a constant, okay? First we are dealing with a constant. The number is all the same, it is a. So in this case, is there any variance there? Variance also means changes. So does it change? It doesn't change. So the variance is zero because it doesn't change. All the same, right? All the same. But here it is a little bit different. We know this is the uh, benchmark, okay? This is a, uh, the, the, the benchmark for us to deal with other variables, okay? So we assume expectation is equal to, expectation of x is equal to mu x, and variance of x is equal to sigma x squared. And now we are talking about a different variable now. This variable, the data, looks like this. Originally it is x1, x2, xn, and now it is bx1, bx2, and bxn. So can anyone tell me what should this be? It should be b times mu x, right? But what about this? v, b, x, what will this be? Okay? So, we are going to deal with v, b, x, okay? And v, b, x is equal to expectation, okay, b, x minus mu, bx squared, okay? So in this case, I put it this way, okay? It should not be mu x, because now the variable we have is bx, right? So it should be bx minus mu bx squared, okay? Because originally, it's here, okay? The original formula is here. But now we are dealing with bx, not x, right? So here we put bx, okay, and here we put mu bx, okay? What is this? We already got it, right? It is b mu x, okay? So it should be expectation bx minus b mu x squared, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, so we can factor this out because this one has B and this one also has B, right? Okay, so we put this out. But, oh, but okay, let me uh, try this step by step, okay? So we have B X minus mu X squared, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, so then this one has to be square, right? So it, it is now b square and x minus mu x square. Any questions? And so what is this? Because this is a constant, right? Because this is a constant, so we can move this constant out b squared times expectation x minus mu x squared. What is this? What is this? This is vx, okay? So now we have b squared vx. So this is the result. If we know vx is equal to sigma x squared, okay, this is equal to sigma x squared, what about v, b, x? It should be b squared, sigma x squared, okay? So what is this here? It should be b squared, sigma x squared, okay? So now let us try one example. So if you know, okay? If you know, say, 
x is equal to 4. Okay, vx, let us say vx is equal to 4. Okay, vx is equal to 4. So what about v3x? How much should it be? When you move this out, you have to time it twice. So it has to be square. So it will be 9 times Right? Because here, VBX is equal to B squared times sigma X squared, right? So here, this is B, right? This is B. So B squared times VX. So 9 times 4 equals 36. Okay? Any questions? Now let us get to another example. So from A, and then x and then bx now we want to get to the example say a plus bx1 a plus bx2 a plus bx3 n okay so now what is this this is expectation of a plus bx okay a plus bx Okay, because in this case, you can simplify it to expectation. So this is actually equal to expectation A plus expectation BX, right? And what is this? We know that it should be A. What is this? We already know that it's B mu X. So this is A plus B mu X, okay? Okay, then what about here? Now we want to know V of A plus BX. Okay, this is what we want to know. Okay, let me try another example to tell you. Uh, let me see if we need to do that. Anyway, let us try this. Okay, let us try this. The formula is still here. Okay. Now we are going to talk about this, okay? And let us put down a formula. It should be A plus BX minus expectation A plus BX square. You look at this. This is X, right? Okay, this is X, but now it is a plus bx okay so here because it is a plus bx this is x right x is now a plus bx so we have this number here okay and this is mu x right this is mu x but now what do we have we have a plus bx right a plus bx so this is mu a plus bx okay Okay, so now we have to simplify it, okay? And as you already know, this is A plus BX, right? And what is this? This is minus, okay, A plus B mu X, right? Because we already know that this is equal to A plus B mu X, okay? Any questions so far? Okay. So then we have expectation A plus BX minus A minus B mu X squared. This one and this one cancel out. Okay. So what do we have? We have expectation B x minus mu x squared, right? Do you remember what is this? This is actually 
b square v x right okay let me give you a better idea okay so let us move this up here so we have expectation b x minus mu x square so we have expectation b square x mu x square right and then we can move b square out right what is this this is vx okay this is vx so what does this mean no matter you add a number okay you add a number or subtract a number because a can be negative okay a can be negative so no matter you add a number or subtract a number does it affect variance no it doesn't affect variance but will it affect means expectation yes it will affect if you add a number or subtract a number you will affect expectation but if you add a number or subtract a number you will not affect variance okay you will not affect variance any questions so far so later on let me tell you that say w is equal to 5 times 6x uh, 7x w is equal to 5 plus 7x okay and I know expectation is equal expectation of x is equal to 5 variance of x is equal to 7 okay can you tell me what is expectation of w and variance of w okay can I erase this erase means to get all these things out right okay okay so because of these relationships because of these relationships so we know expectation of w is actually equal to 5 plus 7 of expectation x okay so this will be 5 plus 7 times 5 so that will be equal to 40 and what about variance w remember when you get to variance okay it has to be b square okay a plus b x then when it gets to variance you have when you move it out you get square okay so vw will be equal to uh, v5 plus 7x right and that will be 49 times vx so that will be 49 times 7 343 okay so this will be easy if you know the relationship between ver random variables you can calculate uh, the expectation and variance of one variable from the other random variable very easily okay so that's the relationship there okay any questions so far let us get to another example okay are we done with this okay Sometimes we will want to uh, get rid of the uh, mu x sigma x squared and get them down to some easy number. Okay, so let us say x, the mean is mu x, and the variance is sigma x squared. 
But of course, in this case, it is kind of difficult to deal with these numbers. Sometimes we want to boil down to some easy numbers. So we want to get to a different variable that's called z. And we want them to be 0 and 1. OK? So in this case, we have a standardization process. And the formula is like this. So z is equal to x minus mu x divided by sigma x. If x has a mu of mu has a mean of mu x and variance sigma x squared, then z, if z looks like this, then the mean will be zero and the variance will be one. And now we will do the same thing, try to verify if this is the case. Okay? Of course, we know when w is equal to a plus bx, okay, remember that the expectation of w will be equal to a plus b mu x, right? And variance of w will be equal to b squared times v x. Okay? So this is what you need to know. The same thing, because you want to know expectation of z, right? You want to know variance of z. So we have to do the same thing. Expectation of z, okay, is equal to, in this case, we will rewrite it, okay? So now let us rewrite it here. So z is equal to what? x is here, right? But how much is the x? It is 1 over sigma x times x, right? Okay? Because x is here, okay? This number, okay, this random variable, it is equal to x minus mu x divided by sigma x. So if we want to write it this way, w is equal to a plus bx, right? How much is b? b is equal to sigma, uh, sorry, 1 over sigma x, okay, 1 over sigma x. And how much is b, uh, is a, how much is a? It is negative mu x divided by sigma x, okay, and you put them together, it is equal to some, uh, x minus mu x over sigma x, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, so now we know expectation of z is equal to negative summation, uh, expectation x, uh, sorry, sigma x, mu x plus one over sigma x, x, okay? In this case, this is a constant, right? Because whatever mean you have, whatever standard deviation you have, you know this number. So it's the same thing, right? You just move A out, okay? You just move A out. So this will be negative mu x sigma x, okay? So this is A, okay? This is A, and this is B, right? Plus sigma x over 1, and mu x, right? Okay, this will be mu x. So, how much is this one? How much should be this number? Because this is mu x over sigma x, negative, right? And this will be the same thing, mu x over sigma x, but it is a positive number. So, we add them together, what do we get? We get 0, okay? So this shows you, after the standardization procedure here, we have expectation of z is exactly equal to zero, okay? Now let us get to the different, uh, the variance, okay, here.
Okay, V, Z. Because as a matter of fact, A doesn't matter, okay? A doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is B, okay? So what is B? B is sigma, uh, sigma x 1, uh, 1 over sigma x. And because when you move B out, it has to square, right? And times Vx. How much is Vx? Vx is here, right? Sigma x squared. So this will be 1 over sigma squared times sigma squared is exactly equal to 1. So this is an application of the function of random variable because we first deal with it, right? And then we give you another example to show you that how to apply the relationship between one random variable and the other one, okay? So this is one of the example. This question was on the test on the midterm last year. But of course you know this year you won't be on the test, but still you need to practice it, okay? Any questions? So now we are going to deal with two random variables. As a matter of fact, we talked about it before because last time we talked about uh, the high school students, right? Male, female, and uh, if it's in freshman, junior, senior. So this is actually two variables. One is for the gender, whether you are male or female. The other one is for which class you are in, okay? So actually there are two variables there. And here we are going to uh, try to find out the relationship between two variables. And the relationship between two variables uh, has at least three. The first one is they are not related, okay? If they are not related, so you don't know anything about them because they're simply not related. And the other direction would be they are positively related. Positively related. And the other one is negatively related. So we want to know what means positively related, what means negatively related. Because you, most of you have studied economics, right? Okay, when price goes up, what happened to quantity supply? Quantity supply will go, when price go up, quantity of supply will go up, right? If price goes down, quantity of supply will go down, okay? Because in this case, if price increases for the producer, because price increases, they, the profit will be higher. So they will be willing to offer more quantities, offer more products in the market. On the opposite, if price goes down, what will they do? Because price goes down, their profit will go down. So they will offer less they will produce less. So in this case, the relationship between price and quantity supply is positive because we say they move in the same direction. Price go up, quantity of supply go up, and price goes down, quantity of supply goes down. They move in the same direction, okay? It goes up, then it goes up. It goes down, then it goes down. This is what we call positively related, okay? Because they move in the same direction. One increases, the other also increases. One decreases, the other also decreases. What about negatively related? They will be the opposite, right? So price goes up, what happened to quality demanded? It's gonna go up or down? Go down, because if something becomes more expensive, Okay, becomes more expensive, it will take out more of your money, so you will buy less, okay? 
If price goes down, then quality of de quantity demanded will go up because it becomes cheaper. So you will buy more. Okay. So this is what we call negatively related. Of course, in terms of economics, we have this kind of relationship. But in terms of statistics, we have different way to figure out the relationships between two variables. We call covariance. Okay. Of course, there's a formula for covariance. Covariance of x, y, it is equal to expectation x minus mu x and y minus mu y. Okay. So in this case, we are dealing with two variables. One is x and one is y. Of course, we want to know what's the relationship between them. If covariance x y greater than zero, then what does that mean? They are positively related. Okay. If they are less than zero, then they are negatively related. Okay. And now the same thing. We want to simplify this formula. Okay. We want to simplify this formula. So what would that be? This will be equal to expectation x times y, we get x y. x times mu y, right? But this is negative, so x times mu y. This is negative, right? Minus mu x times y, OK? And then this is negative. Negative, we got positive mu x mu y. OK. So what do we get here? We get expectation x, y minus expectation x times mu y minus expectation mu x times y plus expectation mu x mu y. OK. And of course, there's no way to simplify this part. So it is expectation x, y. And now, this is mu y, right? It is a constant, OK? This is a constant. So we can move this out, right? But do you remember when we say uh, expectation of bx is equal to what? b times mu x, right? OK, we say if it is, if the variable is like this, OK, and we already know expectation of x. So when you get this kind of relationship, get this kind of random variable, what do we get? We get b times mu x, OK? So the same thing, this is b, OK? This is a constant. This is x. So what do we get? Mu x times mu y, OK? The same thing here, this is mu x times y, right? So, but this is b y, okay? And so this is, would be b times mu y, okay? The same thing, mu x times mu y. And plus, here, because these two are all constants, so mu x, mu y. So what do we get? We get expectation of x, y minus mu x, mu y. So it turns out that if you want to know the covariance of x and y, you don't need to follow this formula. You can 
use this formula to calculate it. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay. Of course, sometimes we are interested not only the relationships between two variables, but also we want to know how close they are related, okay? We not only want to know the direction, say positive or negative, but also we want to know how closely they are related. So in this case, then we have to get another formula, okay, another term to measure how closely the two variables are related. And that is rho x, y, okay, this is what we call correlation coefficient. And what is correlation coefficient? Rho x, y, by the way, this is a, another Greek letter, okay, another Greek letter is pronounced as rho, okay, this is pronounced as rho. So rho xy is equal to covariance of xy divided by sigma x and sigma y, okay? Sigma rho xy is equal to covariance of xy divided by sigma x, sigma y. Let me give you one example. So let us say, in this case, you are talking about kilograms. Okay? Kilograms is kg, right? And let us say you are dealing with this data, okay? The same data, but with g. Because 1 kg will be equal to 1,000 g, right? So 1 kg will be equal to 1,000 grams, okay? So when you're dealing the same variables in terms of kg and in terms of g, how much will be the difference? At least 1,000 times. But if you have two variables with the same thing, then you would have, uh, that would be 1 million times different. So in this case, we want to avoid that kind of confusion, okay? So we want to use a different kind of variable. In this case, uh, correlation coefficient can tell us how closely these two variables are related because it has a limit. Rho xy is less than or equal to 1, greater than or equal to negative 1. If rho xy is equal to 1, what does that mean? They are perfectly positively related, okay? If it is equal to 1, then they are perfectly positively related. If it is equal to negative 1, they are perfectly negatively related. So, uh, oftentimes we use correlation coefficient to figure out the relationships between two variables and how closely they are related. So, let us say, if rho xy is equal to 0.5, and another number, say rho m n is equal to 0.9. So in this case, the relationship between x, y is not as closely related as m and n because these two numbers, uh, this is higher, so they are more closely related. Okay, any questions? So let us say expectation of x is equal to mu x, variance of x is equal to sigma x squared, and expectation of y is equal to mu y, and 
variance of y is equal to sigma y squared if this is what we know, okay? So let us say expectation of x plus y. Can anyone tell me what should this be? If we have expectation x is equal to mu x and variance of x sigma x squared, this is what we know. And what is this? It should be mu x plus mu y, okay? So this is easy, okay? Then what about this? This will be more difficult, okay? So let us try. It will be expectation x plus y minus mu x plus mu y squared. But of course, let me put down this, okay? This one should be expectation x plus y, right? Because variance of x is equal to expectation x minus mu x squared, right? And this mu x is actually expectation of x. And so now we, what we have is not x. It is now x plus y. So this is x plus y, okay? And this mu x should be expectation of x plus y, okay? And we know, what is this? This is mu x plus mu y, okay? So now we can say this is x plus y minus mu x minus mu y, right? Any questions so far? Okay? So now, let us do this. So we have actually x minus mu x plus y minus mu y squared. Okay? Any questions so far? So this is x minus mu x plus y minus mu y squared. So let us expand it, okay? Let's expand it. So what do we get? We get expectation x minus mu x squared, right? Plus y minus mu y squared, right? And plus 2 x minus mu x y minus mu y. Any questions so far? Okay, then we have expectation x minus mu x squared plus expectation y minus mu y squared plus two expectation x minus mu x y minus mu y. Can anyone tell me what is this? That is, this one is actually variance of x, right? So variance of x plus this one is variance of y. And this one is, we just talked about it, right? This one is covariance, right? So two times covariance x, y, okay? So this is what we end up. Vx plus y is actually Vx plus Vy and plus two covariance x, y. Okay? Can anyone tell me what should be Vx minus y? Vx minus y. Okay, you want to do this as a 
example, I mean practice it, okay? You want to practice this example. Okay? It will be Vx plus Vy and minus, okay? Two covariance x and y. Okay, now, what about this? Variance ax plus minus by. What should this be? Because you have to remember, this is variance, right? This is variance. So when you want to move this constant out, it has to be squared, okay? So this will be a squared vx plus b squared vy and plus or minus depending on the notation, okay? It is plus, it is plus, it is negative, and that's negative. 2ab covariance x, y. So please practice this example and this example, okay? And of course, if you uh, get to the practice session, okay, you can ask the uh, teaching assistant how to do this, okay? Any questions so far? Then we want to get down to uh, two basic uh, concepts about this. One is dip independent. If x, y are independent, then covariance x and y will be equal to zero. Okay? If x and y are independent, then covariance x and y will be equal to zero. So what does this mean? That means Px times Py is equal to Px and Y, right? If Px times Py is equal to Px and Y, then they are independent, right? And if they are independent, then covariance Xy will be equal to zero. Okay, we will continue in next hour.